Every time I turn on the news, it seems to get darker and grimmer. I'm sure like you, hearing the stories and seeing the images of the challenges that are happening in Afghanistan, not only there, but in our own communities throughout the United States around COVID and around the end of that war are challenging, and that's an understatement. I was thinking back to when my daughter was born 20-some years ago. It wasn't but about nine months before 9-11, which we're coming up on the 20th anniversary of. We were there, and she was a young baby, and it happened to be on that Tuesday I was caring for her as Kelly was working. We were headed to the park when we got the news of the towers falling after the terrorist attack. It's really been her entire life that we've had soldiers from our community sent to places in Afghanistan and Iraq and other places throughout the world in a very long, difficult, and sometimes hard to understand war, both against terror, but against all kinds of other things. It's been an overshadowing and an ever-presence of a reality that's sometimes difficult to remember or to recall. I think of a number of young men and also women who I've had the honor to preside over their funerals in the last number of years who served in either of those conflicts. Some who died in action in that place others who would succumb to illnesses because of their PTSD and other challenges of having served in war zones. And I think of those families of all those who've served and all the young men and women who live in our communities having spent part of their time of their life in those places and all the myriad of things they're going through and seeing the images, hearing the rhetoric, and watching everything unfold. This is by no means a political sermon, but there is a pastoral reality for all of us of the depth of difficulty that I think our souls are seeing and being challenged with on a daily basis. We also have the ongoing concerns around COVID and all of the challenges that come with that. Our political divisions and our fights, our unknowing of what's next, and our own personal fears of getting sick. These things, this world is pushing our understanding and our realities, and it's pushing us spiritually. When I read the passage from Ephesians for today, that beautiful passage about putting on the armor of God, to have the strength of God with us to face the evils of the world, it's hard not to draw some comparisons to all that's happening around us, about the realities of continuing to be a believer, but not only to be a believer, but to be a disciple of Christ, in a world torn with strife and difficulty. How do we go about that? How do we live into that reality? How can we, as Paul says, put on that armor of Christ and to be willing to go out and to put up that kind of fight when it sometimes seems hopeless and daunting? It's a big question. I thought of St. Francis and other monastics that we know about who lived in times of strife and difficulty, who went out into the communities where they lived and brought hope and light through the gift of the gospel. In St. Francis or St. Benedict, There are both people who started communities 
to help people find order in their life, but also to find God and to find prayer and to find that depth. There is a beautiful prayer attributed to St. Francis, and I know that most of you know this. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. This is an amazing prayer, and I I hope that you'll take some time to stay with it for a while. But to think of ourselves as agents in the world, that when we see hatred, we sow love. When we see injury, we pardon. When we see doubt, we offer our faith. When we see despair, we bring hope. When there is darkness, we bring light. We bring sadness, and we bring joy. This is the challenge of being a disciple in the world, not just for today, but in all time. And it's in living into that reality that the world around us is changed. I think of different people that I've known in my life who've been willing to enter into those moments, into that strife, into that difficulty, into these times where the questions and the answers are unclear, and they do their best to be a disciple and to live into those very principles that they can. Sometimes it's the kindergarten teacher serving in the inner city. Sometimes it's the college counselor talking students through their challenges with identities and realities. Sometimes it's the doctor or nurse delivering difficult news to a patient of the realities of their diagnosis and helping them and guiding them. Sometimes it's a scientist telling the truth to the world despite our unwillingness to believe them. Sometimes it's the police officer entering domestic abuse situations, bringing a light and calmness. Sometimes it's a social worker calling out social justice to those around us and working to change the system. Sometimes it's an average, everyday, regular person treating others around them with respect and dignity, whether it be at the cashier, at the bank, at the post office, or in the store. Sometimes it's you going out into the world in the various places that you serve, and you're that disciple and that light and that hope, and that love, and that faith, and all of those things we're called to be in those moments. Our faith right now, our understanding of God, the depth of our prayer life is so important as we get through the challenges of each day. Be aware of how the news and constantly constantly seeing these images can inflict trauma on your soul and on your being and can cause you to lose hope. But also be aware of God's need for you in all of this story to be the disciples that you are and to be willing to serve anyway. Putting on the full armor of God isn't preparing for war in the traditional sense, but putting on the full armor of God is preparing for being a soldier of love in a broken, dark, and difficult place where we all live. And that's what we're called to be. And that's who we are. I think of St. Francis so many centuries ago 
living through the time when the world was racked with disease and war and challenge, calling out the communities to prayer, to good work, to community building, to life together, and to bringing the kingdom for all. And I think of how all of us are called to that same work right now, right here, in every place that we go. Amen.